Hello everyone. Welcome to the Lightning Ball channel. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do so and activate the notification bell. Your support fuels my continued efforts. In our previous episode, we mentioned that on the battlefield where Malim's army clashed with the insect army, Peleid grew increasingly stronger as the insect army's casualties mounted. She single-handedly suppressed six formidable fighters, Abra, Midre, Carrion, Frey, Dabda, and Ranga, putting Malim's side at a significant disadvantage. Meanwhile, Primordial Yellow Carrera, battling the strongest insect general, Zess, used her ultimate move, the once-a-day judgment bullet, to eliminate Zess quickly and help her companions. However, just as Carrera was about to support her allies, the insect lord Zelenus appeared on the battlefield and shattered her arms with a single blow. In this episode, we will witness a thrilling showdown between the top tier beings, Malim and Zelenus, in the Tensura world. Additionally, Midray will reveal his true strength in the battle against the Peleid enhanced insect general Majika. Let's get started. Seeing primordial yellow Carrera use Judgment Bullet to kill Zess, Zelenus knew his moment had finally arrived. Like Felway, Zelenus was extremely cautious. Despite his overwhelming power compared to Carrera, he had heard about Tatsuya Kanda's formidable abilities from Insect General Manaza, who had been dispatched to the Eastern Empire long ago. Although Tatsuya Kanda hadn't revealed all his powers, Manaza's long-term observation concluded that his abilities were exceedingly dangerous. Zelenus paid close attention to this detail and, after verifying with Michael, Felway, and others, learned that Tatsuya Kanda's powers had been transferred to Carrera. Moreover, while Michael could use Castle Guard to defend against this powerful move, Zelenus lacked such an ability. He surmised that the power of Judgment Bullet was so immense that even he might not be able to withstand it. Therefore, he waited for a long time, appearing on the battlefield only after Carrera had used the Judgment Bullet. This cautious nature was one of the reasons Zelenus became the strongest. Although his son Zess was killed, Zelenus's main concern was now gone, and facing Carrera posed no threat to him. Compared to Carrera, Zelenus was a being from another dimension entirely. He completely blocked Carrera's omniscient perception, and with just one strike, her protective arms suffered unbearable damage. If Carrera hadn't immediately guarded her vital points, she might have died on the spot. However, the unyielding Carrera angrily remarked that Zelenus was too hurried to show up. Zelenus calmly responded that given the chance to eliminate Carrera, he had to seize it. Carrera felt a chill. Zelenus's terrifying power surpassed her imagination, making it impossible to gauge his real strength. This feeling was akin to facing Zijin, no, even much, much stronger than Zijin. Nevertheless, Carrera refused to give up easily, sarcastically pointing out that despite being the insect lord, Zelenus was still so cunning. Zelenus retorted, not willing to back down even in verbal exchanges, stating that the demon before him was already at death's door yet remained stubbornly defiant. Though Carrera put up a brave front and disliked Zelenus's arrogance, her expression was anything but calm. The initial strike had rendered her mythic great arms useless. She could barely lift her golden gun, let alone wield a sword. This level of damage from a single attack was enough to prove Zelenus's immense strength. Zelenus's entire body was covered in an exoskeleton of ultimate metal, hierocane, even the cilia on his body were mythic grade blades. His two wings were highly compressed energy masses, and the power generated by their flapping might even surpass Carrera's prideful nuclear magic and destructive capability. However, in a strange turn of events, Zelenus did not attack immediately. Mouths grew on his feet, and he began to devour his fallen son Zess piece by piece. Carrera was shocked by Zelenus's perplexing behavior. Zess, who had always proclaimed himself the new generation creator god, turned out to be merely a disposable pawn for Zelenus. As Zelenus consumed Zess, his son's power and experience became part of him, further enhancing Zelenus's strength. Laughing loudly, Zelenus declared that his successor had to be stronger than him. Zess, being so weak, could never be his true heir. Carrera immediately prepared to defend herself, but her arms were completely immobile. Even with Carrera's ability to think at a hundred million times normal speed, 
The conclusion remained grim. The damage inflicted by Zelenus was irreparable. Carrera reflected on all the battles she had fought since her birth, unable to find a way to overcome this desperate situation. Just as Carrera was about to accept her fate, Zelenus's kick was intercepted by someone else. A cheerful and cute voice declared that it was finally her turn to step in, and there was no need to hold back anymore. It was a beautiful girl with cherry pink hair, Demon Lord Melim Nava. The fierce battle between Melim and Zelenus commenced, leaving Carrera standing bewildered in her place. The clash between Melim and Zelenus was like a battle from mythology. Their punches tore through the sky, generating intense energy that made the earth tremble. Despite the planet shattering energy they unleashed, the world remained intact for one reason both had deployed defensive barriers to protect the battlefield. This was one of the reasons Melim hadn't joined the fight earlier. Known as the Destroyer, her power was simply too immense. However, Melim also had a strategic side. She understood the impact her attacks could have on the planet, so she had released the defensive barrier early on to protect it. As for Zelenus, although he was the invader, his goal was to conquer, which meant he also needed to preserve the world. However, Melim felt displeased by the situation. With her enhanced barrier, Zelenus could more easily absorb the energy from the corpses on the battlefield, further empowering Peleid. Zelenus's audacity in exploiting Melim's barrier to achieve his own goals was infuriating. Despite her irritation, Melim did not act recklessly. Normally, she could rely on brute force to solve problems, but against an opponent who matched her strength, she had to adopt a more cautious approach. Zelenus calmly caught Melim's punch and counterattacked. Melim, equally composed, retaliated with punches, kicks, headbutts, and various other techniques. Both sides fiercely exchanged blows, either willing to back down. Melim felt a deep satisfaction, as it had been a long time since she had found an opponent who could match her to such an extent. Zelenus, on the other hand, taunted her, saying he expected more from the daughter of creator god Veldanava, implying that she was not as impressive as he had thought. Although Zelenus spoke arrogantly, his actions were anything but careless. He maintained the highest level of vigilance while pretending to disdain Melim. His cautious nature was evident from his earlier patience with Carrera's judgment bullet, proving that he never underestimated any opponent, no matter how weak they seemed, and always sought the optimal strategy. Even his ambush on Carrera was meticulously planned. Zelenus had tampered with the barrier to delay Melim's intervention, albeit by only ten seconds, but it was enough time for him to eliminate Carrera. However, Melim's computational abilities exceeded his expectations, and she intervened faster than anticipated. Additionally, Carrera's resilience surprised him, otherwise Zelenus would have eliminated Carrera as a potential threat much earlier. Zelenus observed Melim's demeanor and couldn't help but think that it would have been advantageous if his taunting tactics had made her careless. Clearly, Melim's calmness once again exceeded his expectations. Melim, on the other hand, expressed her happiness at finally being able to fully enjoy a battle. As she spoke, Melim revealed her true form, her body covered in pitch black armor, dragon wings unfurling, and she wielded the Azura, a weapon given to her by Gi which she rarely used, an acknowledgment of Zelenus's power. Curious, Melim asked Zelenus why, despite his immense strength, he was so cautious, which might cause others to call him a coward. Zelenus replied that for the sake of victory, he would rather be seen as a coward. He proudly stated that he didn't care about others' opinions. Zelenus's ambition had always been to surpass creator god Veldanava. Since being named by Veldanava, he had been searching for the meaning of his existence. Unlike Felway, who held a blind admiration for the creator, Zelenus constantly explored what he should do, ultimately concluding that he must surpass the creator god, Veldanava. Zelenus's body was immortal. All his cells were under mental control, capable of instantaneously regenerating beyond the normal levels. He was in existence beyond aging and disease. However, he would still die if his energy was completely depleted. Even if his body was indestructible, his mind had its limits. To completely surpass Veldanava, the unavoidable reality of death was a significant problem. 
Therefore, Zelenus decided to embrace caution, using every possible means to elevate himself. He meticulously enhanced himself and increased his subordinates for this very reason. Although he knew it might backfire, he created Peleid, Zess, and Zijin. Through Peleid, he spawned more of his children. However, Zelenus never intended to pass the title of insect lord to his offspring, including Zess. Instead, he planned to strip them of their power once they matured. Zess, who was the closest to Zelenus in both strength and temperament, was also extremely cautious, even more deceitful and treacherous, always seeking to devour other insect generals to claim their power. Yet, all these schemes, including his attempt to kill Zijin, ultimately failed. Of course, Zessa's final act of drawing out Carrera's ultimate skill before being consumed by Zelenus was a highly satisfactory outcome for him. Zelenus's caution and strength made Meline quickly realize that he was even more dangerous than initially anticipated. She concluded that failing to defeat Zelenus now would lead to an uncontrollable disaster. Ultimately, she decided that she must go all out to eliminate him. Meline declared that she would take Zelenus seriously, donned a serious expression, and unleashed her full power. Zelenus, recognizing the gravity of the situation, had no choice but to show his true strength. Both unleashed their powers simultaneously, and their auras clashed, causing countless explosions in the surrounding space. Even the strongest beings in the world would not emerge unscathed if caught in this battle. Malim unhesitatingly used Drago Nova, her hands gathering star particles, an otherworldly destructive force, all aimed at Zelenus. Even Peleid, who could reflect Carrera's abyss annihilation, couldn't withstand this attack. To ensure Zelenus's death, Meline pushed her power to the barrier's maximum limit. On the other side, Zelenus chose his strongest move meant to kill enemies, Devastator Virus. Dark particles surrounded Zelenus's body, intercepting the light of Drago Nova. These dark particles were the dark cells within Insect Lord Zelenus's body. Zelenus could manipulate matter absorbed from other world at will, allowing his body to infiltrate and erode enemies from within, making it nearly impossible to defend against. Melim's Drago Nova and Zelenus's dark particles intertwined, light illuminating the darkness and darkness eroding the light. Though it lasted only a moment, it felt like an eternity. Melim intended to kill Zelenus with overwhelming force, while Zelenus aimed to consume Melim. As light and darkness converged, the outcome was finally revealed. Standing victorious was Melim. The dark particles, though they had ensnared her, had not broken through her aura. Aside from mental exhaustion, Melim was unharmed. As for Zelenus, although he remained unscathed, he experienced an intense pain. He couldn't help but marvel that there was something in this world that his dark cells couldn't consume. Melim's star particle was a special substance whose destructive power surpassed that of spirit particles. Only Melim and the vanished Veldanava could control it. Therefore, Zelenus could only choose to neutralize the star particles. While he still sustained some minor injuries, they were insignificant in the grand scheme. Zelenus stood up, glaring at the unharmed Melim and fell into deep thought. His cautious nature made him start to doubt whether he could actually defeat Melim. From this moment, Zelenus understood Melim's immense strength. She truly lived up to being Veldanava's daughter. That previous strike was incredibly powerful, yet Zelenus could sense that Melim had even deeper, unfathomable reserves of power. He recalled the barren land left behind after Melim's battle with Gi. If Melim's recent attack had been the extent of her power, it wouldn't have caused such irreversible, severe, and dense magicule pollution. Zelenus was convinced that Melim's true strength was far greater. If he couldn't guarantee a hundred percent victory, continuing the battle would be dangerous. Ever cautious, more so than fell way, Zelenus began to consider retreating. The perspective shifted to Midre, who was confronting Majika. Based on existence points, Midre's were significantly lower than the enhanced Majika's. Yet, their battle was evenly matched. The reason was that Midray had completely removed his limitations, transforming himself into his dragon body, a form he had never shown in front of anyone except during his battles with Melim. Midray's body was covered in dragon scales, protecting him everywhere except his joints. 
Using his full strength, he engaged his opponent in a battle that was as much psychological as it was physical. Carrera, watching the fight despite her injuries, couldn't help but admire Midray's power. She even wondered who was stronger between Midray and Zijin, feeling that their techniques were equally matched. Carrera believed that if Zijin fought seriously, he would likely win, but if Zijin compressed his power to Midray's level and only competed in technique, they would be evenly matched according to her judgment. After an intense exchange of attacks and defenses, Midray and Majika distanced themselves, observing each other's stances and calmly assessing the timing for the next attack. Both couldn't help but respect their opponent's strength, finding joy in the battle despite being enemies. They recognized each other's abilities and honored their combat prowess. Midray smiled and raised his left fist, releasing an air bullet as he swung it forward, then quickly retracting his arm to perform a feint, using the recoil to deliver a spinning kick. This tricked Majika, and as he raised his sword to block the air bullet, Midray's kick connected, causing Majika to stagger back with a cry of pain as the fighting aura penetrated his body. Midray was a master of the fighting aura style. Just as Velgrine developed the dragon fist style while searching for Rudra's soul across other worlds, Malim, through movements similar to jiu-jitsu combined with fighting aura, developed her own style, which could be called the Dracophist style if it needed a name. This style relied entirely on personal training, knowledge, and experience. Now, at over 2,000 years old, Midray had dedicated his long life to mastering the Dracophist style, resulting in his immense strength. Returning to the battle, Majika, having taken Midray's powerful strike, immediately heightened his alertness. His theoretically indestructible exoskeleton had a gaping hole. Despite gaining new strength through life restoration from Peleid, Majika knew that if the fight dragged on, he might still lose to Midray's formidable stance. Thus, the best strategy was to use his utmost skill and strength right away. With a blade forged from alienium, Majika steadily advanced on Midray. However, Midray did not evade. Instead, he boldly raised his arm, and with a sharp, clear sound, he blocked the blade with his arm. Majika was utterly shocked, but Midray calmly stated that using one's body as a weapon was nothing extraordinary. What Midray considered normal was unreasonable for others, as he was a powerful warrior trained by Malim. Midray's method involved covering his dragon body with dragon scales, concentrating all his fighting aura into a single point to harden his body, allowing him to withstand mythic-grade weapons. Using the same technique, he could transform his body into a mythic-grade offensive weapon. Though it sounded simple, only Midray, the divine dragon magen, among the true dragonets, could achieve this. Even Gabaru, another true dragonut, couldn't replicate it. Simultaneously, Midray maintained his left arm's block on the blade while lowering his stance, transferring the fighting aura from his left hand to his right hand. He also drew upon the planet's geologic energy, concentrating it within his body. This was the essence of the Dracophis style, planetary assimilation. Such immense energy placed an enormous burden on the body, but Midray ignored the consequences, forcibly suppressing it. By the time Majika realized the danger, it was too late. Midray unleashed his ultimate move, Draconic Blast. Although it looked identical to the attack that shattered Serral, Draconic Cannon, its power far exceeded the world's rules and common sense, completely surpassing Draconic Cannon. Majika saw a massive hole appear in his chest and slowly understood the truth. He had been utterly defeated. Yet, strangely, this defeat did not sadden Majika. As he departed, he felt content, not as an insect general, but as a warrior satisfied with his final battle. Alright, that's all for this video. The strength of Zelenus is truly formidable. Even without absorbing Zess, a single strike from Zelenus rendered Carrera's arms irreparable. However, from the battle between Malim and Zelenus, we could clearly see that Malim, as one of the strongest in the Tensura world, surpasses the insect lord Zelenus. Even without displaying her full power, Malim was already above Zelenus, who was nearly fighting at full strength. This just proves that Malim, as Veldanava's daughter, is an absolute existence in this world. In our next episode, we will witness the despairing combat power of insect queen Peleid. How will Carrera, 
with her arms crippled, managed to defeat Peleid. Tatsuya Kandu will make another appearance, and what kind of intriguing interaction will occur between Carrera and Tatsuya Kandu? The next episode promises to be just as exciting. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated. See you in the next one.